Good afternoon, Vikes. In today's show, I caught up with Mr. Collins to talk about the English department. Justin is back with another special 2K update. Jake has another what to watch. And really, you already know who I am, but you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform. Finding character and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. With the new continuous learning plan rolled out this week, some of the departments have had to make changes to keep students learning. I caught up with Mr. Collins to see what the English department is doing. Hello, Vikes. I'm here with Mr. Collins, head of the English department. So, Mr. Collins, with this continued learning, what will continue looking can, or the English department look like with this continued learning? Well, uh, Aaron, first of all, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, those individuals that were a part of putting the continuous learning guidelines together for our district. And then a huge shout out to my fellow department members. Uh, they're fantastic to work with, and uh, they've done a fantastic job of getting ready for Monday, and they're just uh, ever so excited. Yeah, um, b basically, because uh, Seaman School District is a little bit ahead of the curve, if not a lot ahead of the curve in a lot of ways, with some of the things that our leadership has uh, uh, allowed us to move towards, such as blended learning and project-based learning, um, we, we feel very ready for uh, what it is that we're going to be doing starting Monday. Uh, will, will it be the same as face-to-face? -face? Uh, no, uh, but I'm very confident that our students are gonna get what, what it is that they need and uh, not lose out. Yeah, as an example, we had some uh, issues that we had to overcome. For, uh, for instance, um, uh, Ms. Fuller in her workplace reading essentials class had two books and uh, now we're not able to distribute those books to the students. Um, but uh, she's found a way. And again, uh, because of this wonderful technology that we have, yeah, she's able to push it, if nothing else, at least excerpts of those books to, to her students and allow them to read. Um, we, we have talked about the possibility of difficulties that we would face, um, things that we, we would do a little bit differently. But yeah, we're it, as our own uh, personal department's philosophy states, you, you know, uh, we want our students to exit semen better communicators and better uh, masters of the language. and. Our students are still going to write and our students are still going to read and they're going to discuss and they're going to be able to um, leave semen uh, upon graduation ready to go into the real world. Okay, so will a lot of the learning be on Schoology? And I realize, you know, in English, there's a lot of reading, but, uh, you know, most students don't have the books that, uh, you know, will be read. So how, how will that look like? Well, uh, everything has been uh, uh, uploaded. For instance, I teach sophomore English and uh, we're going to be reading Romeo and Juliet. And I've uploaded on Schoology three versions, uh, one version that allows for an audio read along. And it's actually a, a fantastic way to go about teaching. I wish I would have known it the first uh, four years that I taught. I think that it's going to be very positive for my students. So uh, students are going to be doing a lot of reading uh, online, yes. Okay, and uh, was there any major changes to like the curriculum for um, just, be, just because we're not at school or anything like that? No, uh, one of the things uh, two years ago, the department came together and uh, created a curriculum map. And one of the main things that we wanted to be able to do with the curriculum map was to make sure that it was dynamic, that it could experience changes uh, as new technology. Basically, there are new things that come out um, every year, every month, every week, uh, moves along and moves forward as writing moves along and moves forward as reading moves along and moves forward. So we've, uh, we've got a curriculum that allows for us to be able to adapt to the situation at hand. Okay, so there won't be a lot of changes that will happen. I mean, your normal 
lessons or whatever will be still kept the same. It just will be all online. Yeah. And if nothing else, the, the one thing that uh, we've talked a lot about, um, oftentimes when an individual in, uh, in the education is face to face, uh, one can provide a little bit of prodding, make sure that work is getting done. And uh, we're a little bit concerned uh, uh, about that, not, be able, not being able to provide that uh, prodding. But the, uh, the important thing is that our students uh, and, our, uh, and my staff realize that there has to be an open line of communication. We have all these fantastic ways that we can communicate through Schoology. And some of us have learned new ways. Uh, I did not know that we could do video conferencing through Schoology. And that's going to be fantastic and, and wonderful. So uh, the adaptations are going to be uh, easily met with. And, and you know, when, whenever an uh, individual goes into uh, a situation like this, there are going to be hiccups. And we're prepared for those. And uh, I'm blessed that I work with a tremendously intelligent group of individuals that are patient and able to solve problems and, uh, and, and are willing to, number one, help others, and then number two, uh, to accept help. Okay, um, that is all the questions I had. Is there anything you'd like to else add? Yeah, I, I, I think for everybody, um, be safe, be well, keep uh, well informed, and uh, know that on behalf of the English department, uh, we, we miss our students, but we're so excited to get started on Monday, and uh, we're enthused about moving forward together. If you have any questions or concerns, teachers are only a Schoology message or a quick email away. Yesterday was the last day of the Stuco Challenge. First place winner was Ellie Key. Second place winner was Best in the Jews, and third place was Melanie McLaughlin. Please contact Simon Stuco on Instagram to claim your prize. If you left something in your PE locker, do not worry. You can pick up these items when the school building re reopens. Now that is all for the announcements. Justin is back to give us a special update about the All-Star Game for the NBA 2K Tournament. Hey Vikes, we have some exciting new information about the NBA 2K Tournament. The All-Star Draft was yesterday, where Gavin Wilhelm and his player Kevin Durant and McLean Finley and his player Paul George drafted the All-Star teams that will be playing this weekend in the All-Star Game. Let's go see what those teams are. It's All-Star Weekend on SVTV. Can Team Durant take down Team George? It's Kevin Durant, the best player on the planet. I believe he is. I believe that right now he is. They're both loved and hated. Is Durant a lock top five player? No. In the NBA? No. But Paul George is my MVP thus far. It's Paul George that's been putting on a show. And you look at what Paul George is doing. Who do you have for this matchup of the ages?
Wow, this looks like it's going to be a great basketball game. Here are the stats of the All-Star players brought to you by Stuco. Also, make sure to tune in to the dunk contest and the three-point contest. All live this weekend on SVTV. Now after the break, we'll see how nice it will be this weekend. Hey, I'm going to go home and watch some Disney+. Plus. See you tomorrow. Be safe. There's supposed to be a nasty storm. We're tracking round two of winter weather this week. Look at this. A much Are you ready for another round of showers and thunderstorms on the way for tonight? There could even be some severe weather with the main threat being large hail, perhaps quarter to golf ball size in the strongest storms. But we also can't rule out an isolated tornado or some damaging wind gusts either. The flooding threat remains low, but in areas that saw two to upwards of three inches of rain last night, any additional rain on top of that could lead to some localized flooding concerns. Here's how it looks on future radar. This is once again a late night event with this being 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. And you can see some showers and thunderstorms across far eastern Kansas into western Nebraska. And again, some of these could be strong to severe. So the bottom line is make sure you have a way of receiving warning information tonight. And SVTV Weather will be keeping you updated once these storms develop. It's not a major severe weather outbreak here today, but tomorrow there could be a severe weather outbreak to our northeast. This is northern Illinois, and that is a moderate risk of severe weather, level 4 out of 5 on the scale. And there could be many strong tornadoes tomorrow in this part of the country. It could quickly become a national story, so just watch out for the, your friends up to the northeast tomorrow could be a pretty rough day. Here, the rain chance is much lower tomorrow, only about 20 or 30%. It's just going to be a few hit or miss showers, if anything. No severe weather to worry about here locally tomorrow. But the big story will be the wind. And check this out. Winds could be gusting upwards of 40 miles per hour during the morning. And we could even touch 50 miles per hour for a wind gust tomorrow afternoon. Most of the day, the winds will be coming in from a southerly or southwesterly direction. But as we get closer to the evening, 5, 6, and 7 o'clock, that's when the winds will start to switch out of the northwest. It's overall just going to be a very windy day tomorrow. Either way, you slice it. Here's the SVTV 7-day forecast showing the storm chance tonight. Maybe a few showers tomorrow, but I think most of the day is dry, just very windy. Sunday is by far the pick of the weekend, sunny skies, much lighter winds, and still highs in the mid-60s. Then our next storm arrives Monday night into Tuesday morning, bringing some rain to the area. Right now, it doesn't look like the best setup for thunderstorms, but a little bit cooler on Tuesday with the rain in the morning, highs in the 50s. And then we're right back to sunshine by the middle of next week with highs returning to the 60s. Aaron, back to you. Thanks, Josh. Be sure to get out this weekend. Jake is back with another segment to tell you what to watch over break. Hey, Vikes. Welcome back to Jake's Movie Reviews, where today we'll talk about what to watch when you're bored at home. Today's show is Riverdale. The show has came out with three seasons, with the last one coming out last May.
The show is based in a mysterious town called Riverdale, where a group of teenagers have to go through lots of hardships and defeat the people who threaten the town. This CW and Netflix hit series is based in off of the you old Archie comics him. featuring Archie, Jughead, Archie. Veronica, and Betty as our four main characters. Together and with the help of some other friends, every season they must defeat a new threat to the town before it gets to them and ruins everything. After the death of Jason Blossom, the town is turned upside down and we will see the town's dark side. All four of them face difficult hardships through school, love, or family, as either if your dad's in a gang or even a murder. Throughout the series, there are three main gangs you would be in, with being either the Southside Serpents, the Ghoulies, or the Gargoyles. No matter the gang, the town will need to come together to, the, to defeat the threats of Riverdale. If you like the Vampire Diaries or Pretty Little Liars, I would definitely recommend the show to you. I would overall give this a 5 out of 5 Jakes. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time, bikes. If any of those shows or movies piqued your interest, be sure to check them out. Well, Vikes, that's all I have for you today. Be sure to get out this weekend and have a good rest of your day.